Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another Down Days TV live from Innsbruck. My name is Daniel Hanka, this is Martin Mischoff, and this is presented by Falco Skis, Monster Energy, and Oakley. And we have a full show, and we have an amazing guest today. My main man, Finn Bill, is from New Zealand. Welcome. What's up, brother? How are we doing? How are you doing today? Doing well, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Stoked to have you here. Well, Dan, we have a lot of things happening in this show, but we're going to start it off with a little interview with this guy. Well, yeah, I'm down. Yeah. Like, how come you're here? I uh, just got back from Fieberbrunn. We just finished the event over there and, uh, yeah, spent a few days in Innsbruck before making our way over to Verobia. So, pretty good times out here as always. Well, Finn, you're doing Free World War II now, but you're coming off of a slope style and big air background. What made you do this just a transition? Uh, I've been riding the like slope style World Cups and stuff for probably about eight years now. And, uh, I think as time was going on, I was starting to realize the direction of that tour was kind of going in a different direction to the, the vision I had with my skiing. And um, I've always enjoyed just riding a variety of different terrain. And uh, this season, just wanted to put some more time back into riding some free ride events. And yeah, I've been enjoying it. And uh, we've had a pretty big Kiwi posse on the tour this season. So pretty amazing time to be involved. I've uh, I've actually experienced uh, the house you have here in Innsbruck. Can you tell us a little more how it works? Because from what I've heard, if you invite a Kiwi somewhere, you're totally doomed and there's like 50 of them coming in your place and they're just staying the whole winter. So can can you enlighten us how this works? Yeah, man, never invite a Kiwi when you're uh, overseas because you're kind of fucked. You're going to have about like 30 Kiwis just like sprawled out on the floor. <laughs> um, I guess like being so far away from home, we've all got to kind of band together to make it work and... Usually, you know, we're in the ski world, you're kind of doing it on a budget. So, uh, yeah, we just jump in the same beds and see how many people we can squash into a, a little house. But I'd hate to be our landlords because, um, yeah, I don't know if we're the best kind of uh, guests. <laughs> how, how many of you are actually staying in that house? It's, it's pretty fluid. Uh, people come and go <laughs> pretty, pretty frequently. But, uh, yeah, it's always a, a bit of a riot in the household. Well, give us a number. because uh, Let's put it that way. What is the most amount of people who slept in one bed? Oh, man. <laughs> like, I mean, if you've seen like a tennis snooze, uh, it's probably comparable to how tightly they're packed. Oh, in. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's probably like 12 people in there like at any given day. Um, but there's always, you know, a few stragglers coming and going. <laughs> Beautiful. I love the how they have like this little community center, you know. It's uh, it's pretty dang. Uh, can I get back to the free eye world tour? Because uh, what I really admire is that you bring a lot of style and swag into the FWT, which I think hasn't really been seen like any time before. And uh, I think we also got some clip prepared uh, of you styling. And I really hope there's a clip of you doing the cork three, and you actually did an afterbank. <laughs> That's probably like one of my favorite clips of all time. But like, can you tell us a little more about like the approach? Uh, of your runs and like how maybe you're trying to implement some freestyle and yeah just what, whatever's going through your head and the way you think about it yeah thanks brother uh i think going into this season uh having watched like my brother ride on the tour in previous years um i kind of just wanted to approach it with kind of a vision of doing runs that like i'm most inspired by and skiing the terrain that i'm most stoked on and I think coming from like Wanaka in New Zealand, I grew up kind of skiing like a pretty wide variety of terrain, you know, riding in the terrain park at Snow Park and Cardrona and then also going up places like Treble Cone and um, we've got quite a lot of like wind lips and quite flowy terrain and I think I gravitate more towards kind of those types of features and less so more of the chargey free ride kind of tech, like straight drops and um, I know it's been a cool challenge this season just adapting some of those bigger faces that we ride on in the tour and yeah, I guess just trying to stay true to me and um, also just the type of riding that I'm most inspired by and I'm watching when I'm uh, getting stoked up in the morning and watching some different ski flicks. So. You, you, you drop in, like, I'm getting inspired by different guys. Who are the guys that inspire you skiing? Uh, I think in the backcountry, like, I watch a lot of different snowboarding clips. Um, like, love watching, like, Kazu and, like, Nicholas Mueller and then uh, Sammy Carlson's been a huge influence. Um, and... I think like, you know, Candide and then some of the OGs from NZ, you know, like even watching Jossie, he was like such a multifaceted skier oh, yeah. uh, and his approach, you know, skiing like slope style, half pipe, he can charge free ride as well. Um, and then we've got some like 
old schoolers like Jeff Small and some of the OGs. I don't know if you guys have heard of those names, but uh, yeah, I think just people like that have um, I've seen since such a young age and just try to um, take some different influences from different people and try to spin it into my own kind of way. And then when, when, when you like pre-riding and slope style skiing or park skiing, you try to implement all these tricks into the free ride lines. But then how do you approach a line? Like, cause these faces, you stand up top and you can barely see like two meters and the red, the next thing you see is the finish line. So how, how do you stand up there? How do you create your line? Uh, we spend a lot of time looking at the face. That's been kind of a funny thing adjusting to this season um, of rocking up in a location. You literally stare at the space for like four days straight. Uh, trying to figure out, you know, which way you're going to go. And um, we get to the top and usually you're looking at a lot of different images and everyone's pretty cool on the tour as to like how much you can like gather from each rider. They kind of like might have done a similar line in the past and they'll kind of like give you a couple like key pointers throughout the run and you can kind of use those as flags on the way down. But I always think you like plan for a run and it works out the way you envision probably like 20% of the time, so you're like, <laughs> you've always got to have like plan B's and different um, ways to get down throughout and I mean it's always just nice when you get to the bottom and you're in one piece and everyone's having a beer at the end of the day. So. <laughs> yeah, there could be like pretty high consequences if you do a wrong turn, huh? Yeah, for sure and I think like that's been pretty interesting watching coming from like the slope style world where there's like a lot of technical difficulty in the tricks that people are doing and obviously a lot of danger in that aspect but then when you jump into free ride you're dealing with like a really different type of danger in terms of like the consequence is often like a lot more uncontrollable as to like you might take the wrong turn and then you're in something that you like had no idea you were going to be in that position you got to adapt so on the fly but I think that type of riding is like super exciting and just you really have to trust your instincts and your habits you know when you're placed in those positions where you probably don't want to be <laughs> yeah Sounds terrifying. Should we maybe watch some of your clips from the Free Eye World Tour production, please? Can you enlighten us a little bit? Let's go. Oh, that's you. Gotta have some beats on the drop in. <laughs> I love you just like nolly in, you know. I just love the energy. This was a fun line. This was an Andorra. Uh, this one goes to Bakira, but um, yeah, I think the Andorran face was one of my favorites of the of the season so far. Landing oh, switch in Free Eye World Tour. So you know? good. So good. And that was one of your f favorite faces in Andorra? Yeah, I think so. Eh? There was just like a lot of different components in that run that made it pretty fun. Probably the longest face we got to ride. Um, and yeah, it was cool just like, getting to show kind of a, a variety of different riding styles throughout. We got pretty lucky here in Kicking Horse 2 uh, with the snow conditions. We, we got a fresh dump like the night before the event and it's pretty on the next day as you saw in uh, Max Hicks' backflip as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, look at my it. favorite clip. My favorite clip. Look at this afterbang. <laughs> this is the sickest. Mm, thank I you. love it. Such a badass move. <laughs> oh, it's so much trickery. So playful. Such playful lines as well. Like this is this is the, let's say the future of free skiing. Let's hope. Hopefully. Yeah, you <laughs> thank <go>. you. <laughs> yeah, and like uh, for example, now we can show a little different side of uh, of your ski style uh, because uh, I don't know, like two weeks ago before uh, the. Uh, free Eye World Tour at Fieberbrunn. Finn has been training for this event in uh, Absolute Park Spring Battle, and we also got a clip of that. So if maybe we can watch it. <laughs> That's great training for the Free Ride World Tour, I think. I mean, Absolute Park is probably the best training ground in Central Europe for any free skier or snowboarder. But yeah, for a free rider? It was weird. I was kind of anticipating them being having we Israel in the drop in Fieberbrunn, but. Didn't seem to happen this year, so so weird. We should, we should get that in next year, right? Hopefully, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, uh, another complete boss move to be training on rails for the FWT. Uh, also, uh, maybe I've heard something about knucklehawk at the Absolute Park. That's right. Did something happen with you and the knuckle? Oh, the knuck turbo knuckle. Excuse me, it's a turbo knuckle. Maybe. Turbo knuckle. Yeah, I ended up uh, coming away in the top spot with that one, which was a nice little uh, surprise. There's a lot of uh, sick riding going down on that thing throughout the week and got a nice little uh, phone call from my buddy that was at the award show because I'd actually had to boost the fever brand already. So, yeah, I was stoked with that one. <laughs> tight, tight schedule for sure, all season round. Uh, 
And now, you know, you ski free ride all tour mostly now, but you coming back to the park, you still debating with yourself whether to possibly come back and do some free style comps as well? Yeah, I'm not too sure uh, what the future holds quite yet. I'm just like enjoying riding um, a lot more like free ride terrain at the moment, but that's not to say that I won't um, jump back in the park and do some more events. But yeah, I think just the variety has been a real fun thing to approach this season and um, there's so many fun riders out there and different approaches to skiing that are yeah, stoked to just get involved with so many different facets of the industry. Well, we 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 found out at the beginning of this season that Fizz has taken over the Freeride World Tour. Has that made any effect? Like, what do you feel? How do you feel about that? Uh, I'm not too sure yet. I mean, we haven't <laughs> seen too much change in it, but uh, coming from slope style and seeing some of the negative effects, I'd say, of the Fizz um sanctioning coming into the sport uh i was definitely hesitant when i heard the news but um i do think like there's some amazing people working on the free Eye world tour and whilst those people are still in charge i think it's in pretty good hands so i mean time will tell but uh, i'm hopeful for our uh, good things with the free Eye world tour in the future uh yeah i i'm also pretty curious for how this is gonna uh, turn out uh also talking about time uh I've also heard something about it. You haven't really had a summer for quite a while, and maybe that's also the reason why you like, why you're such a good all-around skier. Because basically, your whole life you're just skiing all year long, which is uh, pretty insane for most of the people that are maybe watching. So, can you can you tell us like when was the last time you actually enjoyed like your summer, and what's maybe like a uh, your fulfillment of such a summer? Oh uh, yeah, the last full summer I had. Back in New Zealand, I was nine years old. Um, I'm 23, 23 now, now, so it's like, <laughs> yeah, I think like 26 or 24 winters in a row, which is pretty wild to look back on. But um, yeah, both my parents are from overseas, so had the opportunity to travel uh, pretty young, and we were just like going over and doing a bit of skiing on some of those like family trips. And uh, as it progressed on, just kept on staying in winter. And uh, yeah, can't really remember the last summer I had, but um, I mean, in New Zealand, we have pretty lucky like climates in terms of being able to ski and then when you come down into the uh, townships you know we're not living in the snow level or anything mm -hmm. so you kind of have like dual seasons when you're at home and uh, we're able to surf all year down there as well so it's a pretty special place to live and I think the the only way that you can uh, keep the longevity going doing that many winters in a row yeah i believe that and how how is your body handling it like do you have some sort of a preparation like in between these you know, like different winters or like, how are you doing this? It's been all good so far, eh? Um, touch wood on that. But I think surfing has been a big uh, kind of discovery for me and kind of changing it up. I always think like when you're skiing, you're kind of hunched over and skiing like this. And then when you get in the water, you know, you open back up and open your shoulders. And that's been like such a nice uh, contrast and antidote to being in the winter mm -hmm. year round and definitely try to catch as many waves as possible in between the seasons. So... Yeah, that's probably been the, the biggest thing for me. Yeah, sounds good. Do, do you take any inspiration from surfing or do you see some connections too? Yeah, for sure. I think like I watch a lot of surfing uh, before going up in the morning and in between winters. And I think like especially the approach with like surf films um, and filmmaking, there's so many like am amazing clips out there that uh, I definitely take inspiration from, but, uh, which I'd love to like include more into some clips in the, in the future. But I'll... Uh, I know guys like Mikey February and like Craig Anderson and stuff, like the lines they draw on waves are just incredible and like trying to pull some of those, I guess, into approach into the mountain must be a, a good goal to have. <laughs> Free Art World Tour is far from over. We're still going to Verbier. Probably one of the scariest faces on the tour. How do you feel about Verbier? I'm pretty excited to go there. I've heard a lot of good things. Um, I haven't been looking too much at the back uh, <laughs> purposefully, um, but I got the chance to ski that face like three or four years ago, um, which is nice to kind of have a little bit of an understanding or idea of what I'm getting myself into. But yeah, pretty excited to get over there and hopefully the conditions line up because it's been a pretty dry year out here in Europe, unfortunately. Oh yeah, it's been it's been very dry to say that Italy, especially if you compare it to North America where it's been dumping ever since. Yeah, big time. <laughs> big time. What was it? Mammoth has a six meter base or something. It's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. What, what was the best uh, best ski you had this year? Uh, like where? I flew over to Salt Lake City in mid December, just like kind of to get set up for the winter and 
managed to score it with like some record breaking snowfall that they had out there and had some amazing days skiing around Alta. Had a crazy day uh, snowmobiling with Colby Stevenson, which that was yeah. some of the deepest snow I've been in a while. Um, and then out in Revelstoke as well has been pretty pretty good um, throughout some of the later months of the season. You you you, you, you imagine uh, Alta? Any ideas of uh, going over to Chats Gap Pyramids? Want to want to hit any of these big booters at any time soon? I'd be down, eh? <laughs> uh, I'd definitely not be down to getting it. That sounds terrifying, but I mean, if there was a session going on and you're in the area, I think you'd have to sack up and go for it, eh? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Does does look impressive every time I see it. Oh yeah, uh, but I've heard it's not there anymore, huh? Who Chad or Pyramid? Yeah, Chad's. Chad, yeah, apparently Chad's gone, but Pyramid's still happening. Mm-hmm uh i got one more question about sledding you say you've been sledding with colby like uh what was it your first time sledding or you already had some experiences because that definitely ain't easy like many people can imagine you know just taking a sled go out there in the nature like basically it's just digging out the sled all the time and not really too much skiing so how how was it for you uh absolutely i'm pretty dusty at it to be honest i'm still learning but uh yeah colby was nice enough to take me out and he was like he heard me on his sled he's got this big like 850 turbo and i was like in the middle like a little baby and then he's like manhandling the thing behind me um made me feel pretty uh what would you say i didn't feel like much of a man when that was going on but man it was fun <laughs> um, definitely would love to learn a bit more in the future but it's not much of a thing in new zealand we've got like dock permits which are kind of for the natural forest and mm -hmm. um different things around there so i haven't had too much experience but would love to get into it a bit more in the future yeah it sounds pretty good and uh i noticed you brought us some uh nice little or like nice giant actually falco skis so is that your uh 100 weapon of choice for what you're doing lately can you maybe show us and like i don't know just describe the graphics and like whatever you like yeah these are the uh Revolt 121. That's what I've been skiing on all year round, actually, for uh, for the last kind of like five years. At the Spring Battle too? Uh, not at Spring <laughs> Battle, but I have rode them in the park a fair bit. Um, they're a nice ski, super playful, pretty soft, like throughout both the tip and tail. Mm -hmm. But then uh, underfoot, they're still really chargy mm -hmm. and solid. So makes it a pretty uh, good one ski quiver for uh, old types of conditions. We ride them in New Zealand and. I mean, we don't get too much snow down there, unfortunately. So they managed to do it all. Well, we got a bunch of stuff, stuff lined up still, and I would like to continue with our social media meltdown. We're going to watch a couple of social media clips and see what you think about them. All righty. <laughs> all right, let's send it for our first clip here at the social media meltdown. What have we got here? That's a massive double backy. Oh, meaty double backy. First try. That definitely ain't in Europe, eh? <laughs> what that you, was what, not Europe, I would not no, say. Around here. What do you think about that? Because I've heard uh, recently that uh, sometimes it's easier to do two already than just like try one. I'm not much of a dub backy kind of guy myself, but uh, maybe. I mean, it looked like a pretty sizable air and I mean, just set and forget kind of approach sometimes works and... He did a pretty good job, whoever that rooster was. Yeah, yeah. I actually have no clue who that was. <laughs> See, me either. This is, uh, we yeah, have pretty zero idea about the videos. Maybe, maybe you can write in the comments and actually enlighten us uh, uh, who this uh, sender guy was. And I'm pretty sure we're going to be like, oh, Jesus, we're dumb. Of course. Well, if we're dumb any time, that's yeah. just a given. But we'll send it off to the next clip. Oh, oh, I know who that is. I know this is too. savage. Switch tray. Oh, just so random, you know, in a t-shirt, no no goggles, no sunnies. I actually found out uh, while we we're at the nines. Uh, sorry, at um, Spring Battle. Spring Battle, my bad. Uh, he's also a world champion cliff diver. Oh, really? In the summer, that's like his, his shit. All right, so that explains a lot, actually. So... I don't know if you've seen those clips. You should try to pull one of those up for for this. But uh, I mean, it makes skiing look kind of chill when you see what they're doing into water. They're just like. Jeez. But who was that? Uh, it was Mikel. Oh, uh, it's Leo Landro. Leo, Leo Landro. My bad. Um, yeah, beast. 
base. Did you see his like? I don't know if we're gonna have this later, but he 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 did some kind of knuckle catching his his tips front flip out. Yeah, and what? absolutely ridiculous. I don't know what those Norwegian boys are made of, but they've got Viking skin or something. If you watch those cuts, them jumping yeah, into totally. water, it's. But also, like uh, that explains a lot because like they have to have such a great air awareness and like you know it's pretty a lot of death factor too when you're jumping to like 40 meters and you do for i don't know five flips or whatever so maybe doing a triple like on skis must be like oh yeah no biggie it's just i'm on holidays you know weekend warrior still switch to a switch triple scream and, scream semen. and semen i'm not so sure that this is gonna be know, like for one. him it looks super mellow but let's continue to another clip all right who, who do we, we have who next we Oh, we get some POE action. All right. So this is uh, Jakob wow. Wester cruising mellow so far. Yeah, so far. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now half the hill is going to go. Look at that. And still going. He's just cutting it off. Whoa. Oh, Jesus this Christ. This must be so scary. Have you ever oh, been in no. situations like this? I haven't, luckily. I've... Jesus Christ. Yeah, not that down to either. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no boy. way! Oh, that's this is definitely something you never want to have. He stayed super calm and collected. He just boosted out of that. Hey? Yeah, that's, that's that, the, is that like Ooh. the way to just just handle this? If if you have the opportunity, just like point it and try to survive and just ski out. Uh, I think it always depends on the terrain. But before dropping, like you should always try and aim to have some safe spots throughout. Mm -hmm. um, and usually, you know, staying on a ridge. Uh, it's going to break away from you like it just did mm -hmm. for Jakob. So it's a good approach, but I don't know if um, always just continuing down and boosting it is the, the right way to do it. But, I mean, Jakob's a beast of a skier, so um, yep. did a pretty good job there. And uh, I think uh, because I've seen this uh, on Instagram and I think he did like a nice uh, caption description when he explained the situation and everything and also the reason why he actually uploaded it because... He was expecting that it's going to be a shitstorm of comments of him being unresponsible and all the stuff. So uh, if anybody's interested about that, you can check out Jakob's Instagram. And there's the legend or like the explanation of down. this whole situation. Why and how and why he approached it that way. Exactly. That's definitely interesting. An in interesting read to the video as well. Yeah, totally. Next clip. And this is going to go out to New Zealand. Ooh. Oh, oh danger yes. skiing. This is so badass. So sick. Oh my god. This turn. High consequence turn. High consequence. Super high consequence. Yeah, wacko. Oh my Ooh, god. Yeah. Almost <laughs> losing it. That makes the clip so much better. And through the water, skimming over the, that water. Baseline. Wacko wells. Back in so business. So good. Back in business. Yeah, that was a sick line. That's from Remarkables over in uh, Queenstown, um, just across the hill from Wanaka. And yeah, those boys went up there mad late this season and scored some of those bonus lines. That absolute bonus line. Yeah, pretty good bonus. <laughs> Could be the last one you ever take, though, if you miss that turn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Holy. All right. One more, I think. Yeah, one more. Send Let's it. Do it. Oh, gee. Whoa. <laughs> Yo. What is this? Oh, my God. Is this a faction, Ed? No. Dude, how they got poles? <laughs> What is he? Can we see the thing? How is he holding it? <laughs> that was a, that was, that was a great <laughs> Oh, the poles are edited, but the rest's real. That oh, yeah, the good. skis are definitely real. Oh, that's so good. Away. All right. As you see, we are done with our social <laughs> media meltdown, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to get serious now because our next gig is called The Podium of Hate. Finn, you're stoked about this. Super stoked. Yeah, I'm glad. So uh, just to explain what Podium Hate is, it's uh, three, thing, three things that is that are just pissing you off and it doesn't need to be only skiing related. It could be literally anything in the world or even outside of the world. Maybe you're pissed of the universe expanding, you know, or whatever. So, and it would be really beautiful if you could like line these things from the least annoying to the most annoying. That's going to be your top one, top pick. So let's start with the number three. Number three. Um, I'll probably try to keep them somewhat ski related. Uh, you don't yeah. have to. 
Everybody wants to keep it skew related, huh? I think I'm you know, not, I don't it know, is man. difficult. I'm not, I'm not much of a hater. Oh uh, yeah, you're not. You, you always have a smile on your face, um, but everybody has a must be some of it. I'm not that down on the like extra medium outerwear. You know, like when Next. someone's either going like baggy or they go on tight. That's like there's two spectrums, and then there's just like it's not even fitted. It's just like oh, I don't know how you can almost like. It's like seeing someone's, you know, shape through their body and you can kind of just see the, like, nipples piercing through their ski jacket somehow. <laughs> like, I don't know. Or when, like, you're wearing... Schmedium is what you said. A lot of words. Extra schmedium. Extra schmedium. It's not small. It's not medium. It's that weird schmedium in is the Is that maybe, maybe just, like, a fitting clothing, maybe? Like, that's how people should actually wear it, probably, normally? <laughs> maybe, but yeah. it definitely doesn't look like it's very comfy. Yeah. Um, that might be FB on the third spot all right um, so medium clothing third medium clothing i like it uh that was a good pick I, I i've got a wee pet peeve on um when people don't put their pole straps on and they're just flying around in the air that, that makes me feel uncomfortable way eh? i don't know what it is but it looks dodgy that's um, a good one too flying pole straps all right now like uh the pinnacle of hate the top spot of the hate, like the worst. You, you know, you you wanna you wanna know what? Who was it? It, it was Kobe. You know, you wanna know what Kobe said? What? Snowboarders. No, he said actually snowboarders. <laughs> snowboarders. <laughs> That's pretty fair. I got some snowboard homies, so I don't mind the snowboarders. <laughs> I'm not in a rush when I get off the chair. Um, or when people drop in and they're like ski pants are stuck around the top of their boot and you can see the whole back end of the thing and that's oh, not good is brother. that the number one that's probably number one eh? that like, gives me the heebie-jeebies isn't that, I like yell the, at someone like bro isn't that canadian thing though like that's not not the rolled up like not oh, the rolled up sleeves, but forgot. you know when they like go to do their buckles up or something oh yeah, oh, yeah. and then and they forgot it's just stuck up there oh, and it's yeah. like you know they're not stoked about it yeah but it's too late to help them out that's probably takes it for me eh? i actually experienced this uh, when i was walking from my car uh, to the lift and i noticed uh, that this happened to me and i had to put all my shit on the ground and fix it because i couldn't really handle that because i look i feel i felt like i'm the biggest uh, idiot on the mountain basically so you did I, realize at the end of the day though uh, no no it was the beginning but I can I can understand that. So let's uh, sum up the podium. Martin, can you please do three, two, one? So in third place, extra medium clothing. <laughs> Loving it. <laughs> in second, flying pole straps. And in first, visible boots after after dropping in. They're all pretty kit related, eh? They are. Yeah. Well, you want you wanna bring one one not kit related, not ski related? Bonus. Bonus, bonus number one. Oh, bro. Bonus hate. I don't know, eh? Hey. We don't need oh. to, though. You don't no, need to yeah, force yeah, it. No, no, no. We, if we're going to keep the camera straight in your me, face. To I'll just <laughs> blare it out if it all right, comes all right. to me. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine as well. That's fine as well. Well, we have another game lined up for you. And uh, uh, normally we have two guests. But in this case, uh, I will be your opponent if you dare to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right, huh? All, All right. right. Let's so... get ready for the spicy hot quiz. Uh... <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. Because, you know, spicy hot quiz, it's pretty simple. Dan has the questions. We have the buzzer. Whoever answers, well, buzzer first. If you get it right, I have to... Pick one of these five sauces, and uh, one of them is actually going to fuck you up, <laughs> yeah. or me, and the other ones are somewhere in between nice and not so nice. All right. Uh, Dan has the questions. Whoever hits the button first answers. If you get it right, I have to eat. If I get it right, you got to eat. If we don't get it right either, we'll have a luft. All right, game on. <laughs> Sweet and game on. on. You guys, who first reaches five points has like uh, wins the spicy hot quiz, basically. Let's go, sir. Game on, mate. It. Let's get to it. First question. Who painted the Mona Lisa? Picasso. 
That is wrong. <laughs> you can try if you want. Bro. Um... <laughs> I still don't really know this, hey. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so cultured out here. Yeah. Uh, let's just go for old. Uh, Three, two, one. No, oh, you have to answer. Oh, oh too bad. It was Leonardo da Vinci. Oh man! Wow, that was all right. So that's so a you know? that's a chip for both of you guys because you both failed miserably. Right. I'll take whatever you take. Uh, it is the the. It's totally random. So pick your lottery ticket. How much do we have to take of this? Uh, just be generous. How oh, ballsy you want to be? Wow, we really butchered that first one. Sorry about that. <laughs> How does it feel? Okay. Not too bad. Okay, not too right, bad. Let's one. continue. Uh, the score is zero zero. And next question is: Who did the first quad quirk we... on skis? Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry we're talking. Oh, not too much punch going and on in the back here. Is the spiciness evolving? Right. Yeah, yeah. It, it's now starting to good. build, but it's it's okay. We're just chewy over here. So you're yeah. surviving. Yeah. All right. Next question: Who did the first quad quirk on skis? Wacko Wells. Mm, that is oh, correct. Shit. Andre Rogetli. Hell yeah! <laughs> All right, Finn, you have to pick another nacho <laughs> and that triple. I'm getting lost in them. Uh, I think, I'm not really 100% sure, but I think it was a triple. But uh, Andre has the has the quad. Nah. And it's, oh, nah. I'm going to say that's a controversial one. Is he it? did the first one at Cardi's, but it was quite wobbly. Oh, so yeah. Switch quad 16. Mm. Yeah, but it's... Uh, and then the okay. next one was at the nines. Is that yeah, right? that's the that's mm-hmm. what I want to say. That it was in Mar- uh, March two thousand seventeen at nine Royals, and it was quad eighteen, and that was probably like the unquestionable quad because it was just heavily, heavily, heavily quad. I, I think though, if you flip the world around, and you think that because he's on the southern hemisphere, oh, um, right, because of the right. orbit that happens. Eat down the there, chip. Eat the chip already. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> we're in Europe and we're in Innsbruck right now. Here's your chip. Everyone sleep. Yeah. I'll go with you. In, in, in Which one? Man. I might just go right to left just to keep it simple. All right. But is that right. a shit idea? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, no. Petty last time tried the reverse psychology and yeah. really, Petty, really I fucked like, himself up. I told up Petty, time. do this. It's, it's going to be a nice one. He's like, no, I'm taking the other one. Oh, that was all good. Hmm? Hmm? That was chiller than the last one, I reckon. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. So Lucky you guys us. doing great. Uh, so the <laughs> no, score right no. now is uh, <laughs> Martin has one point, Finn has zero point, and we're moving on. Uh, next question. Uh, has Anti Olila ever competed in Olympics? Yes. <laughs> it's a 50-50 chance. <laughs> that is correct yes. answer. In Sochi, right? <laughs> yes, in 2014. You. So I'm afraid, Martin, that's a chip for you. And the score so is now even. One, right? It's uh, Martin 1 and Finn 1. Mm. 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 Oh, this looks good. I think he's... He, Next the, question, please. The, the color is still the same, I feel like. So it's, it should monster, be all brother. good. Mm-hmm. Where's oh, it is? Okay, next question. Uh, in what year did Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin land on the moon? So, when was the moon landing? Stab in the dark. Um, 1969. Oh, yes, that is correct. Answer, unbelievable. Did you know that or it was just pure luck? Same year as Quicksilver was founded, I'm pretty sure. I kind of remember those being at the same time. Kind of same kind of category. Pretty <laughs> pretty, good board shorts. pretty damn good knowledge right there. Uh, impressive. So that makes it uh, two to one for uh, Finn. What one did you just wrap? <laughs> Martin looks happy. Bro, you look not... <laughs> I'm already having the hiccups. You look unwell, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Which one did you have? That one. No. I went back... <laughs> what? Because <laughs> <Not now. laughs> it was too gnarly. Dude, 
Stop talking, start playing. All right, next question. Uh, who was the star of the legendary 2016 Steepski movie La List? Or La Liste? Not sure about the pronunciation, but it's La Liste. What vintage are we talking? Sorry? What vintage? Vintage? Yeah, what year? Oh, no clue. It's 2016. Ah. Oh. At vintage. I'm not going to watch that, eh? <laughs> La, what is it? La list. La list. La list. Yeah. And you, you <laughs> Martin, are you crying? I, I am. Can we, can we ask you, um, like prompt? Uh, yeah. not really. Yeah, no prompts. I'm sorry. It's either yes or no. Or like, you know the answer or not? Then you get like five more seconds to go, and then we're moving on to the next question. I don't know. I, I don't know either. Except that my all face right. Is let's. Burning. Uh, it was Jeremy Heights. Ah, oh, yeah. Gosh. Sorry. Sorry, Jeremy. Yeah, he Thank probably you, will. Next, please. He'll, he'll forgive you. Oh. All right. What is the tallest mountain in Japan? It's. Um... Oh, you have to answer real quick. Come on. Three, two, one. Boom. Martin, do you know the answer? I can not lose. It's going to be Fuji. It is. No. Uh, nice, actually. So now the score is two, two, and Finn is taking a, a cookie. Here's your chip, <laughs> and this, this is your next sauce. By the, the way, the Mount Fuji the is one, three thousand yeah. seven hundred and seventy-six to... meters tall. All right. I don't know, and I think there's even, there's even one that's even more. <laughs> this oh, looks no, it's uh, fine. Don't worry. <sighs> I can see the tears of happiness, Martin. Yeah. Glad you can tell that I'm a happy camper right now. Oh, <laughs> I can. <laughs> That's heinous. How are you doing? Is it oh. fucking awesome? It's beautiful. Nah, bro. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. What is the score? Uh, it's 2-2. Two, two. It's... Uh, Oh, you have to go to the five. Yeah, it's I can't pretty, it. pretty equal. Um, let's get on with uh, another questions. Uh, this one's a tricky one. Oh, <laughs> uh, do, do you need like a little bit of uh, breathing time or crying time? Let's say it's not gonna make it. Uh, believe me, it's not gonna. Nah, get just run it. All right, let's continue. So the tricky one is: How many sides does heptagon have? Uh, what have heptagon? How many sides does it have? Like a geometrical shape, let's say. Ah. Sides, like flat sides or corners? Yeah, or like sides, sides, like probably flat sides. How many sides does it have? Like the, the shape itself. Uh, is it that is a wrong answer, Martin. 16. 16? No, that is also a wrong answer. So that's a chip for both of you. Oh, shit. And it's seven. Oh. <laughs> I guess you hit the lottery with the hottest one, huh? Thank you. I'm dying. Yeah, I just had the news. I'm not really good at these, but eight is octagon, actually. Ah, classic mistake. All right, so one for you. One for me. What is the score? Still 2-2? Two, two? It's still 2-2. Two, two. No, going, no. We're, like, like, yeah, yeah, feel free. We're uh, going one back. Say that now, like, uh, this is going to be the question that will require Have you tried those ones? No. No. <laughs> I want one back. Not two, but one. This, <laughs> this looks <laughs> like probably, that's probably like the most intense we had so far. Like, did we, did the production actually switch the <sighs> sauces? Made them way more hardcore than before. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, <laughs> next question. All right, next question. You guys ready? Oh, I'm dying. In which country is the ski company Felkel based? Ah, uh, oh, goddamn. Answer, now. Headquarter based in uh, Switzerland, factory based in Germany. Okay, the answer is basically wrong. <laughs> like, I asked, in which country is the ski company based? So I don't uh, care about the, where the headquarters or where the factory Germany. is. Germany. That is a correct answer. That's what I said. Yeah, but you you just like said two different things. You overcomplicated it. Yeah, mate. that was too complicated. Basically, your first answer was wrong because it's not Switzerland. 
I'm sorry, Martin, but we have to be I strict take over it. here. I'll take I'm it. I'm really sorry about that. I'll take it, but only because you play in the next game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually setting myself up for some good time in the future. Disaster is coming. Right. Uh, however, now the score is three to two, so there's still two more points for for you, Finn, to to win this. Uh, next question: What is the name of Shane McConkey's alter ego? Saucer boy. Hell yeah, that is correct. That makes it four for Finn and two for Martin. Yo. Martin, do you remember which one was the crazy one? No. Try one. Try that one. We haven't had a dabble on it. I can see your hands are shaking. I. I... Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh no. Stitch up. <laughs> next question. All right. Next one. Next one. Next one. How, oh. many... <laughs> How many grams are in a kilogram? One thousand. Yes. Wow, that's a that's a sick day. <laughs> Yo, good bro. <laughs> uh, oh my god, this I'm this hey, makes me sad. Do it, oh, shit. I got it. All right, this makes the score four for Finn and three for Martin. Have you had this one yet? I don't know. Martin I don't is know. catching up. Woo! All right. <sighs> Oh, this looks so intense, Martin. <laughs> also, is this oh. the first time when there was no? That milk was like delayed. De <laughs> delayed. Oh. Delayed kick. Little turbo charge at the end. Oh. I reckon that one might be worse though. Still. What's the score? Uh, the score is Finn four points, you three points. So you're slowly uh, dying. Yes. Yeah. You're slowly catching up now. Uh, which uh, four points means that it's a match ball, so like one more, and you get you have won. Uh, so another question: What country does the skier Noah Al Baladejo come from? I didn't even understand the question. Uh, yeah. I know he's eleven. <laughs> you have to answer in like three, Andorra? two. Yes, that is a correct answer. Which makes you the winner of the spicy hot quiz. Congratulations! Congratulations! That was really intense. I feel really sorry for you, Martin. And I feel sorry, sorry for that, myself brother. in the future. That was brutal, away. Eh? That was quite brutal. But you almost got Finn. So, uh, really, a plus a lot of points for the efforts. We had a couple of shockers in there, eh? Sorry about that. <laughs> Mona Lisa. That was dusty. Whew. And I was, so, I was so sure that it's not Picasso, but I didn't know what else it was, and I pushed it too quick. That was the only thing that came to my mind. Well, to finish <laughs> things off, <laughs> can you do that? Because all I'm, right, I can, I can, I can take it from now on. Like, uh, I appreciate your sacrifice, Martin. Finn, thanks so much for uh, for being here. Good and... sport. Always good seeing you, my man. Cheers, oh. brother. Thanks for that. What a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, I'm really stoked you enjoyed the time here. Uh, that's it for uh, our today's episode of uh, Down Days TV. Uh, right now, I would just say that if you want to win some uh, Oakley, Falco or Down Days swag, don't forget to type questions underneath the YouTube video and we're going to pick our favorite question and then we're going to reward the winners. Uh, that's it. As Martin is dying over there on the couch, I'm gonna have to say it today without Rochambeau. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'm looking forward to see you in next Down Days TV. Peace on you too. Bye bye!